Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My congratulations to Whitehorse Council and to Leader Newspapers and to the Metropolitan Transport Forum for staging this event because it is an opportunity for us to canvas some of the key issues that we are facing as a community, some of the key points of difference in the upcoming election. Now, let me start with the big one that's on the table. And, uh, I don't particularly like to start being negative, but uh, it's the biggest uh, topic around by volume, and that is the proposal that was announced just the other day about the uh, suburban rail link. And I have to say, the way this has come about, to me, is one of the most irresponsible approaches to public policy that I have ever encountered. It is committing to spend at least $50 billion of public money, probably more like $100 billion, off the back of effectively a brainstorming exercise. It's bypassing all the experts, it's bypassed infrastructure. Victoria, which was supposed to be taking the politics uh, out of infrastructure planning, it comes from a government that can't even find four to five billion dollars for a Westgate tunnel without hitting motorists with an extra 30 odd years of tolls, and yet we're supposed to believe that we can afford 50 to 100 billion. Let me put this in context. The total available capital spend for the state government here in Victoria in any one year on a sustainable basis is around seven to eight billion dollars. Uh, so that's around 200 billion dollars total available funds over the 28 odd years period of construction of this project. Take out about a quarter of that for regional Victoria and that leaves you about 150. Commentators are saying the so-called 50 billion dollar projects looking at least 100 billion maybe more. So on that basis, you're looking at about two-thirds of the total capital available <coughs> to the state government here in Victoria for about a 28-year period going into just this one project. And clearly what that means is so much else is going to miss out, not only in public uh, transport, other road, tra in road transport, but uh, public projects across health, education, whatever. You could do 20 Box Hill Hospital scale upgrades across Victoria, and that would only be 10% of the total likely cost of this project. So it is a major commitment and it's going to suck money out of just about everything else that's available in the state. So if we go ahead with that project, don't expect we're going to be able to tackle things such as crowding on the Belgrave and Lilydale line because there's going to be next to no money available for it. Don't expect we're going to have money for other major public transport or other community infrastructure because we're not likely to have the, the money available for it. Um, even the $300 million that's been proposed to be spent on the feasibility study or business case is enough to pay uh, for the upgrade of about 30 schools, such as Kunung Secondary College, which our side of politics has committed almost $10 million to. So even the business case is a massive investment. So by all means, let's canvas what the options are. By all means, let's Infrastructure Victoria have a look at things. But to announce as a firm commitment a spending of $50 billion upwards uh, to me is just the height of uh, irresponsibility. So what's the Liberal Party's approach to uh, transport? We'd say at the outset that you've got to look at transport in the context of uh, population and planning. Melbourne is growing around 2% per annum uh, at present, and one of the key issues is are we going to continue to push more population uh, into our suburbs, into our established suburbs or our outer suburbs, or are we going to try to ease some of that pressure uh, and uh, encourage more people to settle in those parts of rural and regional Victoria that are looking for population uh, growth. Likewise, what are we going to do about planning? Uh, Box Hill as a key urban centre is one aspect. The amount of population pressure on our residential streets is another aspect. And certainly our side of politics is committed to bringing back the planning protections that have been taken off by the current government. And, that, and our key point is you need a proper, responsible, well thought through infrastructure and population uh, policy uh, before you go off making massive commitments. And what you've got to do is also is focus on tackling the problems that we are facing currently as well as making proper and responsible plans uh, for the long term. So we need to uh, look at continuing with level crossing removal. So I was pleased to <coughs> call acknowledge the, uh, uh, the Blackburn project because that was one that was committed to and funded under the previous uh, government. I'd be very, I could quibble and, and argue at great length about its implementation, but the, the concept was, uh, was excellent and we do need to con continue with level crossing uh, removals. One of the things that I would be very keen to see is 
giving proper priority to the removal of these uh, Surrey Hills uh, Union Road and the Mont Albert Road uh, level crossings. They rank very highly in all the studies that were done up to 2014. They've been bypassed under the current program. I want to see them get the priority they deserve on their merits rather than see for infrastructure uh, projects such as level crossing removals that are being decided on a political basis or on, on the, the, the pick of a pin. Um, let me talk a bit about Box Hill uh, Transport Interchange. And Paul referred to the working group that was committed to by the uh, then opposition was established. Effectively what we've had is one committee that started late, reported late, we had to fight tooth and nail to get the report to released, and then the government handled that committee's report to another committee. And that is basically where, where we are at the moment, not all that much forward on where we were in, in 2014. But the, the key to getting a proper outcome for the Box Hill Transport Interchange is to get a proper master plan for the whole future of Central Box Hill. Because I'm sure everybody in this new room knows the pressure of the, of the towers that have been approved all over the place. The council has tried to get uh, changes to the planning scheme uh, approved. They've been stomped on by the government's expert panel, but the panel of government won't lift a finger to help the council to come forward with another plan. We need a plan that's going to cope with the level of growth that's going to come uh, for Box Hill and a key part of that's going to be what is going to happen uh, with the, the, the transport interchange. Is it going to stay where it is? Is it going to be moved? Now we have a window of opportunity now because Vicinity, who own the two major shopping centres, are at last in a position where they've got the capital to look to reinvest in upgrading their centre, which has needed it for a long time. So you need to bring the three big players to the table. You need the state government, you need local government, you need the vicinity of one of the major landholders, and you need an integrated approach that's going to work for the whole uh, community. It's going to be a, a, a win for commuters, a win for residents, uh, and one that's going to be acceptable in terms of what's going to happen to the future of the, of the shopping centre. That's basically where, where we were back in 2014 when I got to then centre owners talking with through Terry Bolton, then Transport Minister, to uh, the State Planning Bureaucrats, we had the Council involved. You need to bring those three parties to the table and come up with what, what the logistics of the solution are going to be. I mean, we've had a business case that says that the Council produced that you need, uh, we need an upgrade, we all know that. The question is, what is it going to be? Uh, should we put lightweight decking across between Rutland Road and, and Bank Street? Should we put decking uh, on the western <coughs> side of the, of the shopping centre? Should we put the bus interchange uh, on, on that uh, decking, get it off the roof? Uh, can we make the corner of Nelson Road and Whitehorse Road into a, a new decent uh, <coughs> civic space for the centre? These are the issues that need to be talked through in detail. We need to know what we're going to do, and then we're going to need to look at what it's going to cost, and that's the direction I want to take. Thank you very much. Thank you.